Barant Eindrak Strijdom was born on the 15th of July in 1965, in Vienna, Natal, in South Africa. By the time Strijdom was 16, he was already a member of several extremist right-wing organizations and had visions of an all-white nation being established in South Africa. Barant claimed that he attended school camp in Standard 8 that warned against the communist system as well as drug and alcohol abuse. He started reading books on politics in South Africa, and also attended right-wing meetings. He saw them as the only true political movements, and stated that the nationalist government lied to the people. His father, Nick Strijdom, an ex-policeman, elder in the Niederdeitsar Forum de Kark, and a former regional leader of the Eidelberg Afrikaner Weerstandsbeweging, encouraged and supported Boren's views. Mr. Nick Strijdom would later claim proudly in court, that he had planted the seeds of religion and right-wing political views in his son's heart. He also maintained that his son was a dedicated churchgoer and a person who strongly believed in God. Warren Streidung claimed that as a result of his political involvement and dedication to the Arstechte Nationale Partei, the Conservative Party and the Avia Bia, his schoolwork had suffered and his marks had deteriorated. After matriculating in 1984, he decided to join the police force. He saw the actions which the government was taking to combat internal rebellion as ineffective and began to fear that South Africa was going to the communists. He stated that his interest in politics stemmed from an internal fear that for himself as a young man, the government could not ensure a good future, and the older generations were becoming tired of fighting the enemy. After graduating from police college, Strijdom was stationed at Nigel. On one occasion, he saw the corpse of a white nurse who had been killed during a riot. This made a lasting impression on him and served to confirm his worst fears. The country was at war. As far as he was concerned, black people threatened the survival of all on the planet. Sometime later, he was at the scene of an accident in which a black man had been decapitated. He had a photograph of himself taken holding the man's head and wanted the picture printed in the police magazine, with the words ANC Beware. He was, however, prevented from doing this, and not long afterwards was investigated by the security branch regarding his involvement in right-wing politics. During the latter half of 1988, he decided to take the law into his own hands. In the first week of November in 1988, Strijdom visited the Fuertracker Monument to pray and reenact the Blood River Vow. That night, he drove to Wheeler's Farm squatter camp at the Deer near Vereniging, where he shot and killed one woman and wounded another. He stated this was a practice run to see if he was mentally and physically capable of killing people. After the shooting, he camped on a farm in Heidelberg, where he prayed and meditated for two days. He said he did this to see if God was happy with his plan or not. He apparently got no sign that God was unhappy, so he continued to set his plan in motion. On the 15th of November in 1988, he drove to Pretoria Central, where he carried out a shooting spree at Stratum Square killing eight people and injuring 16 others. Seven of the victims were black, while one was Indian. The so-called Wittwolf trial began on Monday the 15th of May 1989 at the Pretoria Supreme Court. The courtroom was packed to capacity on every day of the nine-day hearing, and large crowds gathered outside the courthouse. Strijdom was charged with eight counts of murder, 16 counts of attempted murder, and one of wielding a firearm. He pleaded not guilty. On the first two days, the state called a number of witnesses to stand, but no one appeared for the defense. By the end of the trial, 33 people had appeared for the state, and only four for the defense. On Wednesday, the 17th of May, 1989, Mr. Justice Louis Harms found Stratum guilty on all counts. The following day, Stratum declared that he saw what he did as totally correct, stating, quote, if I had to do it all again, I would do the same thing. When questioned about the Vitvulva movement, Strijdom maintained that it had been established in February of 1986, but would not give any further details. The police, however, claimed that the investigation indicated that the Vitvulva was merely a figment of Strijdom's imagination. On the 25th of May 1989, Justice Arms would pass the sentence. Court C was packed with Strijdom's family, friends, and supporters including an elderly couple in traditional Fuetraka clothing. When he was finally brought up from the cells, he was warmly greeted by well-wishers. His stepmother, Mrs. Daphne Strijdom, 
embraced and kissed him on the cheek and said proudly, Yaisabu. Stridum, the leader of the Vetvulva, was sentenced to death eight times and was transported to Pretoria Central Prison. In a press interview given a few days after the sentencing, Nick Stridum told reporters, quote, I am proud of Hendrik because he sacrificed himself for his beliefs. He is an honest man and I respect him for that. He killed the love of a nation. End quote. On the 2nd of October in 1989, Stridum became engaged to Mascaren Rautenbach, a 22 year old final year student at Pretoria Teachers Training College. The romance started with an exchange of letters after Stridum's conviction and sentence. Stridum and Rautenbach were married on the 27th of November in 1989, while Stridum was on death row at Pretoria Central Prison. They had a 20-minute ceremony after which the couple was allowed their physical contact in the presence of the prison warden. After their half an hour honeymoon, Stridum was returned to his cell. On the 2nd of February in 1990, the South African government declared a moratorium on capital punishment. No executions have been carried out since that date. Hendrik Stridum remained on death row until he was granted amnesty following the 1994 democratic elections. On the 27th of May 1989, Mr. Simon Kondoleli was presented with a 3,000 rand reward by the police for his heroic actions in disarming Stradon and preventing further loss of life. Kondoleli received a number of death threats for his efforts. On the 15th of November in 2018, on the 30th anniversary of the attack, the names of the victims were read aloud in a ceremony. A commemorative plaque was dedicated in the square, created by Bradley Stein, who had witnessed the massacre as a teenager. The ceremony was attended by Carl Niehaus, a spokesperson for the Umkonto We Seize by Military Veterans Association, as well as two family members of the victims. Until next time.